Welcome, we're going to be doing physics 20 with the LRC Resonance Lab. The equipment for this lab is pretty simple. We just have this box, and in the box, we can just ignore the wires for now, but we just have three different capacitors of different values, one inductor, and then three resistors, as well as just a, a wire, a short wire, um, to, to work with. And so we have these banana plugs so that we can choose and connect them any which way that we want. Okay, so right now, this is in short, so that, and the black and red wires here that go to this black box here, they're just inputting um, the current and the voltage. And so this is kind of like our power supply, which is connected to the computer. And then in this black box, there's also these yellow and green leads, which act as an oscilloscope. So we can put them either over the capacitor, inductor, or resistor, and then measure the voltage in, in real time as we're, you know, putting the oscillations in with the power supply. So, and that all appears on the uh, computer. For part A of the lab, what we're going to do is we have the resistor connected uh, to the short, so there's no resistor in it. There is some internal resistance from the inductor, which is labeled here, okay? Um, but the inductor value is that 63.8 millihenries. And then right now we just have connected, um, we've connected the capacitor, the middle one, 15.3 nanofarads is the capacitor we're using. So write down those values and then plug them into the equations that we give you on the sheet um, to determine, to calculate what the natural frequency of the oscillation should be. Now we're going to go ahead and experimentally measure it and see how close that we are. And so we have the oscilloscope leads right over the uh, capacitor. Just as it says in the sheet, if we look at the computer, we're inputting a square wave of frequency 100 hertz, which is well below what you should have calculated for the nat natural frequency. Um, and then this is what our voltage looks like. And so the key thing is, is that it's kind of dying off exponentially, which is what we see in LRC circuits. But it also has this, or I guess this is an LR circuit, or an LC circuit, because there's no resistor. But we do see that it has these small oscillations. And so the period of these small oscillations is what we're interested in, because from that period we can derive the, the natural frequency. And so what I'm going to do is I just want to zoom in on kind of some of those oscillations. So I'm just going to, um, it's this one, yeah, zoom in here. We don't really care about the amplitude, but what we do care about is, um, the uh, the time that it takes to go from one peak to another peak because that's going to be the period and so um, I actually need to zoom back out so I can get our cursor we have this red cursor here that we can move and it tells us the X and Y coordinates so again X here is the time and then Y is going to be the amplitude of the voltage and so um, now that we move the cursor back in there, we can go ahead and zoom in. And then I'm going to adjust the cursor so that it's at the top of this peak here. And so you want to record, for this part, we just care about the time, which is the x coordinate. So you want to write down that number. Let me move the thing. Yeah, there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the cursor to the next one. Top of the next one. Okay. And write down that x value. And so the difference between those two x values is going to give you the period, and then you can use that to find the frequency. It should be somewhere in the same range as the one that you calculated using the values that of the resistor and the inductor, or sorry, the capacitor and the inductor. So that's it for part A. For part B, we have everything configured the same, except now that we have, we've moved this to be connected to the resistor of 145 ohms. And so we have this extra resistance in the LRC circuit. We've also changed our oscilloscope leads from being over the capacitor to the whole circuit. So this is the input voltage. And we went ahead on the computer here, we went ahead and changed some things. So we changed it before it was a square wave. Now we have a sine wave that's coming in. And we just picked the frequency because it was nice and even and near what we expected it to be of 4,800 um, hertz. And so we see the sine wave come in 4,800 hertz and the voltage is at one volt. So it's oscillating between one and negative one, so peak to peak voltage is gonna be two, but you can just record one volt because we're sending it at zero. 
and so our max voltage is 1, and so on your student sheet here, where it says Vn, that's going to be 1 volt. And so now what we can do is I'm going to change the oscilloscope leads to be over the capacitor, like it says in the student sheet, and we immediately see that we're definitely at a higher voltage than we were that we're inputting, right? And so this is kind of the, the cool thing about um, the resonance frequency. And I just upped our range to 10 volts so we can see it better. Um, but here we have a voltage, I don't know, it's probably around 7. Um, 7 to negative 7 is what we're looking at. And we have this, this higher voltage um, oscillations over the capacitor. But we're not quite at resonance. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to change the frequency and just going to up it to 4900. And we saw it grow a little bit. So that means we're getting closer to resonance. I'm going to go ahead and go up to 5000. And we're almost all the way to 10. If I keep going to 5100, looks about the same. If I go to 5200, oh, now it's going down. Just to confirm, I'll go up to 5300. It's down again. And so we know resonance is somewhere between 5,000 5, hertz and 5,100 hertz. And so there's 5,100. They look about the same. So I'm guessing it's somewhere near uh, 5,050. And it looks maybe a little bit higher. It's hard to see these small changes. Um, if we just try a couple other points, it looks about the same. And when we approach resonance, if we're within you know, a range, it's going to still look about the same because it's, it's close enough that it can build up kind of momentum, you could think of it, and cause this higher voltage oscillations. And so it looks about the same, so let's just go with the midpoint. 5,050 hertz is what I'd record um, for the um, resonance frequency as measured. Um, the F resonance in part B is going to be 5,050. And then um, the voltage across the capacitor is it's just under 10. I, what I can do is I can stop it. Oops, stop it up here. And stop it and use the cursor to go to the top here. Maybe I need to zoom in too. Okay, so 9.87 looks like, so pretty close to 10, 9.9-ish. .9 um, and yeah, so that's the voltage for the capacitor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start this again, and I'm going to move the oscilloscope leads to instead be over the inductor. So there it is over the inductor. If you come back to the screen, it looks about the same, which is what we'd expect. Um, and so if we go ahead and stop it again, um, and then zoom in again, we have, actually I'm not sure I'm not quite at the peak there. Okay, there it is. So 9.84. So pretty much about the same, 9.87 to 9.84. These are all a little bit different, right? I mean, it just depends on the where the data, the sampling data point is collected. Um, so yeah, just as we saw in the student sheet that we're talking about, the voltage across the inductor is equal to the voltage across the capacitor at resonance frequency. Again, here's the resonance frequency that we're at. Um, and so the last part of the lab is just explaining why. And so um, good luck with that. That's all the data that you need. And thanks for watching.